This is Eco News with your host, Nancy Perlman. Just 30 years ago, the area I'm standing in was described as a moonscape. Hello, I'm Nancy Perlman. On this edition of Eco News, we get a chance to see how the community of Sudbury in northeastern Ontario, Canada, has come together to take a landscape damaged by nickel mining and restore it to a green oasis. I'm Bill Lautenbach, uh, Director of Planning Services for the City of Greater Sudbury. Uh, Sudbury has a very unique story of uh, restoration and environmental recovery, uh, which has taken place over the last 30 years. Uh, Sudbury historically was uh, quite damaged uh, through a series of events uh, beginning with uh, lumbering activity and most recently mining activity which uh, created a barren landscape throughout the community. Uh, over the last 30 years the community and the mining companies have worked very diligently to restore uh, those barren lands and bring them back uh, into a uh, recovery uh, situation. Uh, we have restored some 3,500 hectares of barren landscape. More recently, we've planted 8 million trees uh, as part of uh, this activity. This is the Jane Goodall Reclamation Trail. Yes, we've dedicated this area to Jane. Uh, this is an area that we uh, restored in our vegetation enhancement program. Uh, all the, the bottom cover we did one point in time and then later we came back and planted these trees. And we have one kilometer of trails to choose from. Let's go over this beautiful little creek. Some of the grasses that you see in this photo would have been uh, planted through the program. Others would have blown in, um, establishing themselves uh, along the creek because they needed the water uh, and were specially adopted to this ecotype. There's some beautiful wildflowers here. Well, the, the ground cover that you see, uh, some of it would have been originally ours. Uh, this legume uh, would have been planted as part of the land restoration effort. Uh, but these other species, uh, this one and this one, would have just come in naturally on their own. They uh, found a good home. They, they found knew a good where home. to come. You uh, were feeding the soil and they said they're going to re-vegetate all on their own. Right. On the rock itself, uh, the acid would have etched into the covering for the rock, creating this dark uh, color. So that's a, a result of the acid rain which occurred in this area over time. Uh, lower down, uh, the rock which is uh, not dark is the natural color of that granite. Looking at a black locust, and uh, it's a nitrogen fixer, and that's why we planted that originally. However, it's not native, normally native to this area. So we no longer plant it. Suckers from its roots, but also it has these thorns, which can be quite uh, dangerous if you uh, wind up running into them. That's a red pine. Red pine. This is a uh, spruce tree, uh, white spruce, uh, one of the species which we uh, regularly plant. Just behind that taller tree is a tamarack. In 1975, when the region at the time began looking at this, how, how to potentially restore uh, this activity, uh, we realized that there was uh, soil material on these barren hillsides which could be utilized uh, by uh, liming, fertilizing, and then seeding uh, barren lands. Hello, my name is David Pearson. I'm a professor of earth sciences at Laurentian University here in Sudbury. And I'm sitting in a spot where I first came in the early 1970s. It was totally, totally barren. In fact, it looked like the surface of Mars, a little bit yellow, much more yellow than the surface of the moon, but just as, as barren as both places. And this is the site where I bring people to show just how different Sudbury is now from what it was 30 years ago. Revegetation began here behind me. There were experimental plots about a meter wide and about two meters long that were first sown with lime and grass seed and they looked like green jewels on a barren landscape. And that's what gave us all hope that revegetation would, would work in Sudbury. And since then, mostly my colleagues in biology and a little bit of, of work myself, we've seen Sudbury change into the kind of landscape that it was before the, the mining industry began here in the 1880s. It's been a, a wonderful experience for me and I'm glad to be here to talk about it.
This is one of the pine trees that was planted and it's about 20 years old now? Yes, it's about 20 years old. The planting was done here in, I think, 1983, 1984, maybe 1985. So a little it over 20 healthy. years old. Well, it's, it's doing pretty well, you know. These are the fresh cones from this year. Those are the old cones, because jack pine doesn't drop its cones like, like other pines do. In fact, it takes, it takes a lot of heat to get the seeds out of, out of, uh, out of jack pine. So they're a, but they're a strong, tough tree, and there were many, many jack pines. You know, we planted now, I think it's nearly 10 million trees. Can you imagine drink, planting 10 million trees? 10 million trees over how many acres? Oh, over about 35,000 acres, I think it is, and over about um, 24, 25 years. So it's taken a long time. Let's go take a look. Oh, let's, let's go, yes. I think that part of what one needs to say about what's happened in Sudbury to people who don't live here is that it's an illustration of what can be done if you put your mind to it. If a community decides that it wants to do something about an environmental issue and the community gets together, doesn't point fingers, doesn't fight, but says, we're going to do something about this, you can do it. We had scientists from the university, we had politicians from the, the province, we had politicians from the federal government, from the city, we had people from the corporations, we had volunteers from schools and Boy Scouts, all working together. And when you work together, you can do things. When you fight, you don't get things done. These, um, these are jack pines, very stiff needles, very typical of the landscape around here. And all of the jack pines behind me, around me, were planted by, by hand. But mixed in amongst them are other plants too. Plants, the seeds of which we didn't bring here, that blew in. And the lesson is that once the soil is healthy, once the soil is not toxic because of, of metals, like copper and nickel, and is not acidic like it became here because of the acidic fumes that came out of the, the smelter stacks, that seeds of many, many kinds will begin to grow naturally. So Sudbury's recovery has been partly what we did with the jack pines and partly what nature did with the, with the seeds that blew in and established the other parts of the ecosystem here. And I have to say, it's partly also what the company did because what they did was they reduced the sulfur dioxide and the metals coming out of the stack. So there was technology working with people, working with nature. In 1975, when the region at the time began looking at this, how, how to potentially restore uh, this activity, uh, we realized that there was uh, soil material on these barren hillsides which could be utilized uh, by uh, liming, fertilizing, and then seeding uh, barren lands. Hi, my name is Tina McCaffrey and I supervise the land reclamation program for the city of Greater Sudbury. We're standing here today at our 2006 liming site that uh, our crews are engaged in liming at the present time. What we do is we put one level shovel full of crushed agricultural limestone in each bag and then we carry the bags up the hill to our liming site. Then what we do is we place the bags in, um, on the ground three feet apart in every direction. Then we go back and spread it by hand manually. There's a special technique that we use to spread the lime, uh, to fling it out of the bag so we get a nice even coverage on the ground. And once we're done with uh, the bags, we uh, gather up all the empty ones and carry them back down to the lime pile and we start again. At this rate of placing one level shovel full of lime in each bag and placing them on the ground three feet apart in every direction, we end up with approximately 10 tons of crushed agricultural limestone per hectare of land. And that is basically our formula to reduce the acidity in the soils here in Sudbury.